So this is one way that we could write it, but it's not the way that we normally write it. So you see you get to use isa with variant names, and you get to use variant name dot field name, but the better way to write this is to use the match form. So with match, we give it the expression that we want to match on. So in this case, we're trying to match the animal A. Either it matches this tiger pattern, which has a color and a stripe count, or it matches the snake pattern, which has a color, a weight, and a food. And now, when I write these patterns, you see they look similar to constructions, but I always use variable names, and these variable names stand for whatever matches. So when we match a tiger, that C is going to stand for the tiger's color, and when we match a snake, that C is going to stand for the snake's color. So let's make one of each. We got an orange tiger, and we have a green snake that likes to eat rats. That's a bigger snake. Okay, so we get green and orange. Um, again, it's because tiger came in, it matched the tiger case. C got matched up with orange, and so that's why we returned C. SE got matched up with three, but we didn't re do anything with the uh, stripe count. In this case, then snake is the one that matched, and so we return the C. The advantage of using match is that well, it's nicer to write, but more importantly, if we forget a case, let's suppose I don't put the snake case here, then when I try to run this, match will tell me that I'm missing a case. Uh, match will also tell me if I have the wrong number of pieces here. So because it can check so much more for us, then match is usually preferable to kind. As a special case, match will also work on lists. For example, suppose we wanted the function that checks whether there's a tiger in a list of animals. So we have a list, which is a list of animals. Um, then a list, remember, has two possibilities. Either it's the empty list, or it's a cons, in this case of some animal, and the rest of the list of animals. And uh, the rest of the list of animals, which I will call list rest. In this case, either the animal is a tiger, or we want to check whether the rest of the list has a tiger. Whereas in the empty case, clearly there's no tiger there. So the point is that this match uh, form, it can work on variants, like tiger and snake of an animal, or variants of a list, which is either the empty list or cons. When it makes sense, you can also use else instead of the last pattern, either in the list form or other forms, um, and then it can capture multiple lists. So here we're just assuming that a non-empty list has a tiger. Uh, not a good assumption, but it just illustrates how you can use else as the last case. Even if you have multiple variants, uh, else can capture uh, multiple of those variants at the end.